That's a good one here. That is why I love throwing a swim bait. What's up ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the Monster Bass Channel. My name is Jeremy with Fish and Lone Star. I'm actually located in Dallas, Texas, and would love it if you hopped over to my channel, it'll be linked below. Follow me for content there on YouTube. Once a week, I try to get out and fish, give you some fun updates about what's happening in the South region, how bass are eating, how they're feeding, how they're patterning, what's working, etc. And also on Instagram, where I post daily content about what I'm doing to catch fish in the South region. But enough about me, let's get into today's topic in this video on swim baits. And I'll tell you, this month's Monster Bass box was loaded with great baits for the fall. I'm telling you, this was a phenomenal box this month. So if you're not currently subscribed to The Better Box, the Monster Bass Regional Pro Box, then go get, go get subscribed. There will be a link below, go sign up today, get subscribed because this box is awesome and I'll tell you, you're not gonna wanna miss out on the months that are coming in the better box. Check out Monster Bass. In this month's box, one of the baits that I absolutely love throwing is a paddle tail swim bait. This particular one was by Big Bite Baits and is the Finesse Swimmer, a 4.4 inch paddle tail swim bait. The reason why paddle tail swim baits are my favorite bait to throw is because there's so many different ways you can rig them. There's so many different applications you can use for a paddle tail swim bait. And let's face it, what bass eat the most are bait fish. So why not throw something that looks like a bait fish? In this video, we're gonna break down this particular bait, how you use it, how you rig it, where you should throw it, the equipment you should use, and how to retrieve it, all to help you catch some bigger fish and some better bass. So let's dive in. All right, first let's talk about rigging techniques. And there's tons of different ways to rig a paddle tail swim bait. You can throw it on the back of a buzz bait, on a spinner bait, multiple different things, ways to rig it on a chatter bait, etc. Uh, those are all very viable options. I'm just gonna talk about the three ways though that I rig them most. And the first one's gonna be in a swim jig or on the back of a swim jig. And this particular color that came in this month's Monster Bass box for this Big Bite Baits Finesse Swimmer is the Tennessee Shad. That's what I got at least. You probably got something different or a different color. Uh, I know some regions got a bluegill color that's also phenomenal. So what you'll see here is it's tied onto or placed on the back of a swim jig. A swim jig for me though, helps sometimes draw bigger bites. You'll see that the profile is just wider. It's bigger, it's thicker than just a paddle tail swim bait by itself. That bigger profile sometimes will draw you bigger bites. And what I love about a swim jig is it's still weedless with a weed guard that's on the top, but very easily though, you have an exposed hook when you push that weed guard down. So hookup ratio is still really good on a swim jig. Now the next way I like to rig them is on an underspin. So you'll see here, this is an underspin. And also this is a weedless underspin, but what came in this month's Monster Bass box is the hybrid airdrop underspin by Zero Gravity. So a great lure presentation nearly half an ounce, but definitely has some size to it. It's a little bit bigger in terms of just the head, but what I really like about this one is it has eyes on it. Now, I don't know if that makes a ton of difference in terms of uh, fish and, and attracting fish, but I've always done really well with a, an underspin that has a jig head with eyes on it. I would absolutely pair those two together. This little willow blade will flicker just like bait fish flickers. So you've got a bigger target and a flickering smaller target with a willow blade underspin that's really gonna help draw bites and attract fish as they're chasing shad and other small bait fish and schools. This is a really good option. And then last, if you're not gonna go with a swim jig or a underspin, I like just your traditional weedless belly weighted hook. This is a screw lock. Uh, in, a, in a quarter ounce weight. And you'll see right now the hook tip is a little exposed, but also you can take expose that, uh, put the hook right into the plastic and you have a weedless profile there as well. All three of these options are weedless just because the last time I was out, I needed to be weedless. Um, but again, you can throw them on an exposed jig head hook as well. But between a normal weedless swim bait uh, jig, an underspin and a swim jig, those are my three favorite ways to rig 
a paddle to a swim bait. Now let's talk about where you're casting it and where you're retrieving and targeting an underspin. Now, right now, this time of year, bass are chasing bait fish up shallow for the most part. So they're crashing on banks and pushing bait fish up against the bank. They're chasing bait fish into the back of creeks and creek channels and cove pockets. So I would target any type of lay down, grass structure cover, or just bank lines in general if you're bank fishing. And I would throw parallel to the bank and bring your retrieve back down. That's gonna be the best place to target fish right now with an underspin, but naturally anywhere there's grass or cover, timber, et cetera, throw a swim bait there and throw it in one of the weedless options. You're gonna have a lot of success doing that. The way I would retrieve them and what I would use as well in terms of gear, first of all, the gear ratio, this is a 7.5 reel by Luz, it's a custom black. I would go 7.5 or faster. You're throwing a moving bait, you wanna keep it moving, and when a fish hits it, you wanna be able to catch up and pick up slack pretty quickly. So gear ratio, I would say 7.5 or faster. The rod, the line, etc. you'll notice all of these hooks are pretty heavy gauge, so I would recommend using heavy line. Now in the south, where I'm at, I use 17 to 20 pound fluorocarbon on pretty much all of my moving baits with the exception of crankbaits. That's just what I do. I want to be able to hook into a big fish and land that big fish. So I have 20 pound fluorocarbon tied on here on a 7.5 reel and on a heavy rod. This is the TFO 7.3 heavy rod, but it's got a good, nice, soft, sensitive tip that keeps fish pinned when I hook up. So uh, a medium heavy or a heavy rod should do the trick for you uh, with this application. Now the retrieval, pretty straightforward guys. Um, a swim jig is gonna be a little bit different, but for the other two, uh, both an underspin or a belly weighted EWG swim bait hook, you're literally just gonna cast. When the bait hits the water, I would count 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, basically a foot, I'm sorry, a second per foot that you want the bait to drop. So if you wanna fish it somewhat right underneath the, uh, the water column, then maybe do 1,001 and begin your steady retrieve. If you know you're fishing in, fishing in five to six foot of water and you want to get down deeper, let that bait sink. Count to five or six. Let it get down there and then start your retrieve. But ultimately, basically going to point the rod right at your lure and just have a steady retrieve. Okay, Somewhere along this speed. And then once you fill a bite, you're going to fill that thump, thump, a quick couple of tips, ticks, sorry of your line, and a hard hook set. I mean, you want to really lay into these fish because, again, you're throwing heavy gauge hooks on some of these lures with heavy line and a heavy rod, you wanna be able to set that hook really well into that fish's mouth. So heavy hook set, but a pretty steady retrieve, guys. You're just gonna cast, point your rod, and a steady retrieve, and just be ready any point in time to then set the hook. But that's at least what I do. The Big Bite Baits Finesse Swimmer, that 4.4 size, and especially in this color, that Tennessee Shad, my goodness, that is such a good looking profile. If you're throwing it on a swim bait hook, it will roll a little bit from side to side. If you're throwing it on an underspin or a swim jig, it will stay really straight. But that tail, the way this plastic is designed, that tail gives a lot of kick and a lot of action. So you're gonna get a lot of movement out of this particular paddle tail swim bait and a lot of action and draw a lot of bites. All right guys, that is it for this month's Monster Bass Box and highlighting the big bite baits Finesse Swimmer, that 4.4 inch paddle tail swim bait. It is my favorite bait because it catches fish so dang well. Get a paddle tail swim bait, grab you some of these accessories, a swim jig, the underspin, or just a belly weight EWG hook, and this particular bait by Big Bite Baits, and get out and catch the monster bass. My name is Jeremy with Fish and Lone Star. Make sure you subscribe below to the Monster Bass channel. Get out there and go catch some big fish. Good three and a half, four pounder right there. It's an awesome fish.